years and years ago, 25 years ago, I was reading Mark, Karl Marx. And what Karl Marx said, you know, is a communist. He said, the problem with America is the American spirit was too strong because, you know, the original pilgrims and pioneers coming to America, they were basically refugees. They were running from oppression. So he said, the spirit of America was too strong, so communism would never work. So I said, before communism could take place in America, the American spirit had to be broken. And the only way you can break their spirit is to make them weak financially. And once they become weak financially, then they'll start accepting money from the government. That's what I think is going on in a bigger picture. I want to talk about a tweet because I, I think something's fishy going on. There's a lot of ulterior motives and most of our society buries their head in the sand about it. And if you bring up pandemic, pandemic, they just like, they, they really get mad. So you said something in a tweet, you said pandemic or pandemic, there will be a surprise pandemic in the near future. Dr. Fauci, uh, repo market collapses September, 2019, January tw 2020, COVID terrorizes the world. Is Corona a smokescreen for big bank fake money collapse or a way for big pharma to make trillions vaccinating the world? That's a pretty controversial treat. What do you think? Well, that's why I tweet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Every I, tweet I was, is controversial. I love it. I, I, I was a kid at the back of the, you know, in high school. I'm sleeping in the back of the room and the only way I could stay awake was raise my hand and make some wise ass remark to the teacher. Hey, you know, nothing has changed. And I sit there, you know, the teachers, when I was in high school, they kept saying, well, if you don't get good grades, you won't go to college and you won't amount too much. So I raised my hand because I have to take them on. I said, did you go to college? She goes, yes, I did. I said, well, you didn't amount too much. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. And I wonder why I flunked out of high school. I mean, I got, I graduated, I have a college degree and all that. But I just hate it when somebody sits there. You know, I mean, I, I just don't get it. Why would you tell me I won't be successful? It's not up to my teacher to determine if I'm successful or not. It's up to me. And even if I flunked out, I'd still be successful. It has nothing to do with my grades or my college degree and all that. Nothing. It's up to me. And the same with all you listeners out there. Your success, rich, wealthy, happy. It's up to you, not anybody else. So yeah. don't give me that BS. That's that's what I attack. So that's why Twitter sure. Twitter's kind of my new favorite attack mode against the, the system, should I say. <laughs> Well, it's great that you're educating people and, and sharing your truth with people and not fearing anything. I love that. There needs to be more people like that. So what's your take on is Corona a smokescreen for the big bank, fake collapse, big pharmas? Because I, I mean, the pharmaceutical companies with vaccines, they make 50 million, they make 50 million, 50 billion dollars up front and 500 billion on the back end from some of the negative effects. So is it big pharma trying to make money? Is it what, what what's your take on everything going on in terms of the pandemic right now well there's multi-levels to the issues you know i mean there's what we're doing right now we're just kind of blowing in the wind and stuff like that we're basically on in this on the survival mode where there's people like i guess the hunger games there's other society things are smarter than all of us and those are the guys i worry about is because uh you know jim records who wrote road to ruin and all that he writes about the elites, and the elites are like the Clintons, the Obamas, uh, Larry Summers, the Fed chairmen, and all this. <clears throat> you know, they all went to the best schools or Ivy Leaguers and all this, but they think they're better than all of us. And, and they, they may be smarter, they may be more successful and all that, but don't run my life. I don't care if you went to Harvard, you just don't run my life. And you want to stick that vaccine in me, I don't have any problem with the vaccine, but don't make me do it. If I want to take it, let me take it. I don't want to take it. I don't want to take it. But I hate it when these pointy-headed SOBs up there are telling me how to run my life. 
you know, I, I obey the law. You know, I, you know, I pay no taxes legally. I obey the law. You can too. The, <clears throat> the laws are equal. But without a financial education, you're going to pay taxes. So if you're paying taxes, your education's suspect. Your education did not prepare you for the real world. So I pay no taxes and I get attacked for that. I say, well, look, I obey the law. No! And these pointed headed trolls on the who Twitter are against me, you know, especially when, especially when I'm anti, especially I don't want to be vaccinated. Give me a break. Run your life. I run my life. That's all I ask. You know, you want to get vaccinated? Put us, you know, just take an IV. Take the whole damn thing. Take my share too. <laughs> I'd rather be healthy so, than that crap. So with the virus, so my thought, and I, I and I want some clarification of what you think. There's been worse viruses in the past. Many hepatitis, MERS, Ebola, HIV, influenza, but they never shut anything down. And there's things right now that kill a lot more people than the virus, smoking, heart disease. Uh, they say the amount of mosquitoes, mis the death of mosquitoes is more than the virus. So I'm not downplaying the virus, but there's a 99.8% survival rate. Why are people so quick to give up their rights? That's what I'm confused about. Well, that's what I'm saying is, how far up does that order come down from? So this guy, Dr. Fauci, you know, his, his name should be Dr. Fascist or Adolf Fauci. You know, I mean, I, I think he's, he's Adolf Hitler reincarnated or something. You know, they, they just want this power. And it went to their heads. So, but who was, who was pulling his strings? Like, my, my question is, when I describe the Federal Reserve Bank, to me, all those guys, those 900 PhDs working for them, they're just puppets. I want to know who the puppeteer is. And so that puts me in the tin hat category of, you know, conspiracy. But you and I know somebody else is pulling the strings. You know, yep. when, when, when you look at who controls all the evening news, you know who controls it? Big Pharma. You know, when, when yep. you, all the guys like me are watching the news, they're talking about diabetes, heart this, all that. It's because the old guys need those drugs. Now, if they can get, if pharma can get everybody to inject everybody, make it all mandated law, they're going to make trillions. Mm -hmm. But at the cost of our freedom. And I don't know if them making trillions is worth my personal freedom or your freedom. But a lot of the trolls... So we on the on on Twitter go come after me well if you want to get injected inject yourself I'll, I'll buy the needle for you you know do I care no just, just don't take your alone. freedom yeah leave me alone so I don't know who's pulling the strings that's what I'm saying so I think Trump is kind of you know rocking a hard space because even Fox is controlled by big pharma Fox News so he's if he and and if he crushes Fauci Fauci will call his friends and Fox will attack Trump. You know, we don't, we don't control the news, but that's why what we're doing today is new, is I can talk to you directly without having to watch the news. So that's why I'll speak to you directly. And it's safer than being on the news, you know, on CBS or ABC or NBC. This is a lot better. So this is the new world. This is the new world. So. So it's to their benefit. It's to big farmers benefit. It's to the certain elites benefit to put society in fear mode. Correct? Yeah. And, and the CNN. So what's your thoughts on CNN and some of the, some of the news that is just, everything is making sure people are in fear. What's, what's your thought on that? I know you shook your head. Well, CNN stands for the cartoon news network. <laughs> They're, or constantly negative news. <laughs> constantly negative. But, but no, I don't mind if it's negative, if it's truthful. Do, do you know what I mean? True. But when I see them distort the news, they, they intentionally distort the news. They change the numbers. That's, I go, wait a minute. How can you do that? Do you know what I mean? How can you lie about the numbers and all this stuff? So I just don't get it. And, and what they'll do is they'll, they'll pick up somebody who is anti-Trump and they'll play him or her loudly. Yeah. 
but not give the other side of the story. So that's what I object to it. You know, at least be fair and partial on it if you can be. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not being paid to do this with you. I just want to say what I think. I just want my freedom, First Amendment freedom. First Amendment freedom is a freedom of speech and the freedom of assembly. So when you go to social distances, you've taken two freedoms away. That's what bothers me. And I fought in Vietnam twice for that freedom. So that's the yeah. difference. A lot of these fascists like Fauci and these, a lot of these elites. And as the baby boomer said, so where were you guys in Vietnam? Were you spitting on me or were you fighting? So nothing's really changed, you know what I mean? When I came back, when I came back from Vietnam and I got off the plane with my 16 troops, we got spit on, egg, eggs were thrown at us and all this. And those are the guys running the academics now. And I think a lot of them became college professors because they have the same energy. You know, kind of the Hillary and Bill energy, Obama energy. You know, they're, they're not, they're different people. And we should we're, be we're not gonna We're not gonna talk about professors. If you wanna know Robert's take on professors, watch our <laughs> other interview. <laughs> that was a funny one in terms of what you think of professors. But here's, so there's a lot of things that have happened in the past. Viruses do kill people. It's a very sad tragedy, but it happens and it has happened and it will happen. Why are they shutting down most of America? And, and these small businesses are expected to shut down. They get feed if they open up to make money, but they yet have to still pay their bills and their leases and their utilities. So, so they're, they're giving them a lose-lose situation, but they're playing it off like, well, the virus is dangerous. I don't understand that. Well, this is kind of outside the box thinking. Is years and years ago, 25 years ago, I was reading Mark, Karl Marx. And what Karl Marx said, you know, he's a communist. He said, the problem with America is the American spirit was too strong because, you know, the original pilgrims and pioneers coming to America, they were basically refugees. They were running from oppression. So he said, the spirit of America was too strong, so communism would never work. So he said, before communism could take place in America, America, American spirit, the American spirit had to be broken. And the only way you can break their spirit is to make them weak financially. And once they become weak financially, then they'll start accepting money from the government. So that was social wow. security, I think in 1933 it started. And then we have Bernie Sanders coming to power and it's socialism. We had Andrew Yang, you know, universal basic income and all this. It's really socialism that's creeping in, and then communism comes in. And communism begins when the government controls industry. So right now, like Boeing and all that are, are t accepting money from the government, but that means we now have government controlling our industries. So we've become communists in this process. So I'm a pure capitalist. You want to be a socialist or communist? That's fine with me. But I just don't like American people allowing it to happen. You know, they just let these, these the Fed now owns a large percentages of many of our biggest corporations. That's communism. That's oligarchies. You know, and, and, the, and to, to get us to comply, they break our spirits. We crushed the small businessmen. We crushed the small restaurants. We crushed the thousands of jobs and everybody just so that they can inject communism and socialism into our system. That's what I think is going on in a bigger picture. And as and the number of deaths, you see, it's always money. When you look at the what is cause, what are some what are some of the biggest killers in the world before Corona? It was opioids, drugs from pharmaceuticals. And the pharmaceutical companies were pumping out all these oxy, and I don't do drugs, so, you know, they were pumping out all of this stuff to make billions of dollars, and it was going to people who are already depressed. You know, people who can't get a high paying job, people who aren't paying their bill, they're not getting ahead financially. So Big Pharma produced all those opioids, and those guys stuck it in their veins, well, however you do that stuff, you smoke it, drink it, I don't know what you guys do those guys do but there are more deaths by opioid deaths than there are by coronavirus 
So I look at big pharma and the Fed and the pointy-headed, you know, Hunger Games ruling class who are destroying us. That's what I fight against, you know? That's what I fight. That's why I'll speak. It's worth speaking or just lay down and I'll put the needle in me. You know, that's kind of how I feel about it. So I'm not saying I won't take the vaccine. I just don't like them lying, cheating, stealing, and taking away our freedoms. So it sounds like they want they want people to be dependent on the government, and it seems like they it seems like the government or the higher ups don't really like small businesses or independent thinkers or entrepreneurs in a way. Right, right. You got it. And that's why there's no financial education in our schools. So they control us through the academic system. Look, you know, when I came back from Vietnam, I was, I was at Norton Air Force Base, and we came off the plane, and I still remember, you know, the, the officer, in, I, was, I was only a lieutenant, but this colonel that was in charge, he says, gentlemen, as soon as you get off this plane, get out of your military uniforms as soon as possible. Don't let anybody know you're in the military. So we got off the plane and there were thousands of these elites yelling at us, spitting at us, calling us baby killers, throwing eggs at us. And I think those guys became the college professors. And that's why California is so effed up. You know, that's why they're, they're, more, they're more, you know, California, they still don't let you go to the beach and all this stuff. They want to keep us shut down for... 90 more days. They're going to kill more people because of that than that stupid coronavirus will ever kill. And the number of drugs and suicides and spousal abuse and all that going on, it's horrifying. But just look at the relationship between big pharma and opioids and big pharma and this vaccine and big pharma's control of the media. Look at that and Facebook and YouTube. You know, look at all that. So I watch all that and I go, why am I so afraid of speaking out in my own country? It's something's wrong. Mm -hmm. So you talked about your, your respect for Elon Musk and you said, bravo Elon Musk for de uh, defying Dr. Fauci and his fastest and reopening Tesla. The world needs more leaders like him and South Dakota governor, Christy uh, Noam, who refused to shut down her state. We, I love this. We have way too many wimpy leaders and we need more leaders with guts. Is that something you strongly believe? Yep, 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 yep. And that's why it starts with you, me, and different people. You know, the, the one thing that I think these fascists did not count on was the power of this, what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and look at how it's changing the world. It's like, you know, this. it's like every Friday, I have a meeting with all my guys. We used to do it on telephone. Now we do it with Zoom. Well, that's just screwed the airlines out of more revenue because now we don't have to fly there. You know, and hotels got screwed. You know, I don't have to fly them all in. So the entrepreneur is going to get richer while these guys who run the Hunger Games want to take our freedoms away, like the Dr. Fauci's. You know, if he wants to inject himself, I'll do it for him. You know what I mean? But I don't leave me alone. That's all I ask. Yeah. So, and it seems to, do you, do you feel like the small businesses that are suffering right now will, will suffer even more with these effects of people staying at home? Is this going to get worse and worse the next, what's your prediction for the next six months to a year in I terms think, of small businesses, entrepreneurs? Yeah. It's more than small businesses. Let's go back to why I recommend Bitcoin, gold, and silver. Is this Corona crisis will come back? I promise you. Fauci's already got it in the, it's a pandemic. So it's going to crush anybody else who had any kind of guts. And that's why you need to be stronger today. If you're not stronger, they're going to get you this fall. That's what, that's my, my most dire prediction is. So that's why I said, why did you write Rich Dad Poor Dad? Because I could see all this coming. You know, if you ever see me on, I have a, go to richdad.com. Uh, there's a site, I'm on CNN, Continuous Negative News of the Cartoon News Network. I'm on, the, I'm on CNN speaking to Wolf Blitzer saying, Lehman Brothers is going to go down. Yeah. 
said that in January of 2008, and Lehman went down in September 2008. But September was the same month that the shadow 2019, when the shadow banking system collapsed in America. The shadow banking system, for those who do not know, that's where the biggest banks go to bank. Like you and I go to the corner bank, you know, Wells Fargo or Bank of America. But where do the big banks bank? They bank in the shadow banking system. So September 2019, less than a year ago, the interest rates in the shadow banking system went up to 10%. That meant the banks didn't trust the banks. They were going broke. So that's why in December and January, COVID appears. I go, oh, there it is. Um, is there anything people can do to, uh, like right after this call to just educate themselves to not live in fear? Because I see so many people that live in fear. They want to project that fear on others to make them feel better about living in fear. I, I want to spread knowledge and wisdom and real value to people. So what can they do? And then I'll let you go to just stay aware and stay alert and stay woke in a sense. Well, be aware of the guilt trip. Do you know what I mean? Like <clears throat> when I'm cruising through the Safeway, the people with masks on give me the stink eye because <laughs> I won't wear a mask. And, and, my, and my doctor said it to me, he says, don't wear a mask. I said, why is that? He says, because it doesn't protect you anyway. And all you're doing is sucking in your bad air. So if you want to be protected, wear a mask. But don't expect the rest of us to do it and don't give me the guilt trip on all that thing. And the other thing is it's on education is because you know I've, I've not you know I've now never 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 did well in school, but the best teachers today are on YouTube. You know if you really want to get ahead, go to YouTube. Listen to you. Listen to me. There's someone as Jordan Peterson. I think he's one of the greatest college professors around. You know, so invest your time watching YouTube and some of the great teachers and listen to opposing points of view. Because that's what life is about. Not everybody has the right answer. Everybody has a different point of view. So anyway, it's, it's the most exciting time. The technology is here for us to make us stronger. The iPhone is the most powerful tool invented for entrepreneurs. It's the most powerful tool. But the iPhone is only as good as you. You know, the, the saying I have, you know, is that when you look at all the homeless people in LA, most of them have iPhones, but it doesn't do them any good because you're only as the iPhone is only as good as a guy holding it, a woman holding it. So you have the most powerful tool. Go to YouTube, beef up your knowledge and intelligence and use it to be an entrepreneur with the iPhone. Or you can be a homeless person. I don't know what they do with it, but they have them, but they don't do, doesn't do them much good because the power isn't in the phone. The power's in their brain. And that's the most important message I can leave. We all have that power, but you gotta have some guts today and keep getting educated. Thank you. Hey, what's up? And thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy this video and this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button below, put the notifications on, and I assure you, you'll love this content in these videos.